Hello everyone, welcome. Today I'll discuss about a very important topic in pharmacology, which is antiarrhythmic drugs. Okay? So before going to the drugs, let's first review our physiology of uh, action potential of the cardiac muscle. Okay? So as you can as you all remember that the cardiac muscle action potential has actually four phase. Phase zero to phase four. Okay? And uh, the phase zero is actually dominated by a voltage gated inward or influx of sodium, so which is the responsible for a rapid upstroke. And then there is a period of rapid repolarization, which actually occurs due to expulsion or efflux of some potassium ions from inside the cell to outside the cell. But later on, this outside current of potassium is actually balanced by an inward current of calcium and this balance actually creates a, a phase which is called the plateau or also phase 2 but after some time the inward current of calcium actually tapers off and the potassium current actually gradually increases which is responsible for the period of repolarization so the phase 3 is actually mediated by uh, efflux of potassium ion okay and then phase 4 which is uh, the resting member potential which is dominated by uh, 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 movement of potassium ions okay so the potential here the phase 4 in cardiac muscle is actually maintained by the sodium potassium adipose pump which actually pumps 3 sodium ion outside the cell and gets or two sodium ion is pumped inside the cell so there is actually a loss of sodium ion uh, so and loss of positive ions will lead to a resting moment potential which is a negative which is like minus 85 to minus 90 millivolt and you can also see here the effective refractory period so this is the phase during which uh, if you give another stimulation of the cardiac muscle the muscle will not be excited again until the action potential is complete so it is about 200 millisecond okay so remember those and if you want to integrate this concept of action potential with antiarrhythmic drugs the phase zero or the sodium influx is actually blocked by class one antiarrhythmic drugs and the phase three or uh, efflux of potassium ions is blocked by class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs so those are the two most common agents class 1 sodium class 3 potassium class 1 phase 0 class 3 phase 3 it's easy to remember class 3 actually okay so let's move on to the next slide so here we have the action potential of the pacemaker tissues like uh, acid node okay so First of all, the acid node has a resting member potential which is lower than the cardiac muscle. So it's about uh, minus 60 to minus 70 millivolts. And then it does not have two phases, which is phase one and phase two. Both are absent in pacemaker. So what it does have is something called a um, phase four, phase zero, and phase three. Okay, so let's talk about from phase four. Phase 4 is kind of interesting in pacemaker because it's actually uh, automatic tissue. So pacemakers are actually automatic tissue and they have a phase 4 which is uh, characterized by uh, influx of sodium and potassium which is also known as IF or funny current. And those are some funny channels of sodium and potassium which slowly increases sodium and potassium influx inside the cell and after after a certain amount it actually crosses the threshold value for action potential triggering and after the trigger or after the cell membrane potential in uh, crosses the threshold there will be a rapid influx of calcium so this is the rapid upstroke which is mediated by calcium and there will be a period of repolarization where there will be efflux of potassium so uh, the most important antiarrhythmic drugs that work here are class 2 which mainly occurs in phase 4 and class 4 which mainly occurs as phase 2 
by blocking the calcium channel so the calcium channel blockers or class 4 anterior the drugs mainly act on the pacemaker action potential phase 0 which is also which is mediated by calcium influx inside the cell so remember that so again the class 1 for phase 0 or for sodium influx class 3 which actually blocks the phase 3 or potassium efflux class 2 which actually blocks the delay blocks or delays the phase 4 of the pacemaker action potential not the muscle action potential and the class 4 actually blocks the calcium influx or the phase 0 of the pacemaker action potential so those are the basic action basic uh, rules or the basic side of action of those drugs but also they have multiple variation ac according to site and according to effect variation okay but this is the basic outline that i want you to remember so okay so let's first start with the class one so i as i have already mentioned class ones are sodium channel blockers and so they will actually slow down or maybe block conduction especially in depolarized cells and i've already mentioned it decreased the slope of phase zero depolarization and it is actually state dependent if some tissue is having a tachycardia or a high heart rate these drugs will have more effect on those tissue okay so as you can see in this picture uh, we have the first group of class one which is class one a and you, you may know that class one actually has three subgroups one is class one a another is class one b another is class one c all blocks sodium channels but in different uh, proportions or in different rates uh, as i should say here you can see a classic class 1a agent which is blocking the sodium channels and actually uh, reducing the slope of the sodium current or the initial depolarization phase so here is the 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 line which is paler this is the normal action potential so this is the normal action potential and the line which is actually darker dark blue it shows the uh, action of the class 1a agent so this is the slope which is a new slope so this line is the new slope and it, it actually decreased the slope due to blockage by class 1a agent so there is blockage of sodium channels and also you note that there is actually increase in action potential duration and also there will be an increase in effective refractory period okay so let's see so there are three main drugs for class 1a as which are class 1a agent so a mnemonic which i actually brought from fast aid 2015 edition is that queen proclaims Dysos pyramid so for queen you have the quinidine for proclamation you have the procainamide and for Dysos pyramid you have the disopyramide and i've already mentioned the mechanism is it actually blocks the sodium channels and thereby it actually increase the action potential duration also increase effective refractory period and by doing that on ECG graph you will see those changes by seeing increase in QT interval okay so you can use them those drugs in especially tachycardic conditions so atrial or ventricular tachycardia especially uh, supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia okay especially re-entrant and ectopic type of SVT but simple idea tachycardia those agents are very good in controlling tachycardia and toxicity depends on which drug you're using if you use quinidine it can cause something called synchronism and you can remember uh, quinine, quinidine is actually a drug which is uh, which was fast described or fast isolated from synchrona bark and that's why quinidine toxicity is called synchronism and the patient can have a neurological symptom like headache and also tinnitus due to disturbance in vestibular conduction okay and also uh, for procainamide there can be some reversible acyl like syndrome so as you can remember acyl like syndrome can also occur with some other drugs like hydralazine and isoniazid and all of them uh, producing drug-induced SLE have something called an antihistone antibody and diazoparamide can also cause heart failure 
and uh, some other effects that all of them share are thrombocytopenia and as those drugs increase the QT interval this can lead to something called a torsus depointes okay very dangerous complication of QT prolongation so if if any drug any antiarrhythmic actually prolongs the QT interval it can cause a torsus depointes okay so here we have our class B agent action so you can see uh, this this was the normal action potential duration and class 1b agents actually decrease the action potential duration okay so this is the main effect so here you have two uh, class 1b agents and the mnemonic for that is I would buy ladies Mexican tacos so for ladies lidocaine for Mexican tacos you have maxillitine okay and this actually as I mentioned decrease the action potential duration and it preferentially affects ischemic or depolarized Parkinsy and ventricular tissue and that's one very important note to remember because uh, this will this tell us that you can actually use uh, in ischemic tissues to prevent arrhythmias so uh, 1b agents are best option for post MI arrhythmias very important especially post MI acute ventricular arrhythmias very important to note very very important please note that and also uh, you can use class 1b agents for digitalis induced arrhythmias and uh, if someone uses class B agents it can lead to stimula stimulation or depression of the CNS and as almost all antiarrhythmic drugs can actually cause cardiovascular depression no big deal here we have the effect of class 1 C agents actually class 1 C agents uh, like all other agents decrease the slope of the dep depolarization okay but uh, class uh, and uh, but the class 1 C agents uh, significantly prolong the effective refractory period especially in AV node and accessory bypass tract remember not in muscles okay so the drugs which are included in class 1 C agents uh, you can remember it by uh, actually suppose you were in a restaurant and you ask the waiter excuse me can I have fries please okay so you have the one C here can see fries for flaconide and please for propafanon okay and uh, remember that there there is no effect of uh, effect on refractory refractory period in Parkinji fiber or ventricular tissue so this is class 1 C agents are very important and remember that they causes a increase in effective refractory period in AV node that's very important to remember AV AV okay and there is minimal effect on action potential duration unlike the class 1 A agent and class 1 B agent remember that class 1 A agent actually increases the action potential duration and class 1 B agent decreases the action potential duration and you can use those agents in supraventricular tachycardias including atrial fibrillation and sometimes you can use in refractory ve ventricular tachycardia as a last resort and toxicity very important to note it is proarrhythmic especially post MI patient it is contraindicated and I brought those all information from first aid that it says 1C is contraindicated C for contraindication C for contraindication so you use 1B agent for post MI arrhythmias and you don't use class 1 C agent in post semi arrhythmias very important to note okay next uh, here we have uh, our pacemaker potential actually to remember you because we are now going to discuss some class B class 2 agents and as I have already mentioned class 2 agents actually act on phase 4 of the pacemaker action potential and they actually reduce the slope so if the slope is right like that the slope will be reduced like that okay so this is the change that we are going to see in class 2b agents which are also beta blockers so beta blockers are class 2 agents and they actually uh, this is this line this uh, pale line is for the normal action potential of the pacemaker and the dark line is the pacemaker action potential after giving a patient class 2 agents so as you can see here this is the slope uh, this is the slope here for normal action potential and the slope is actually decreased 
when you give a class 2 agent which actually blocks the phase 4 depolarization the funny current of sodium and potassium okay and also it causes prolonged repolarization repolarization especially at AV node okay so let's remember that so mechanism as as have already mentioned that it decreases the assay and AV nodal activity by decreasing slope phase 4 okay decreasing the slope of phase 4 this is very important and the way it does that is it actually decreases cyclic AMP and it actually decreases calcium currents also okay so but the most important thing that to remember is it decreases slope 4 of phase 4 very important phase 4 of uh, pacemaker current and AV node is particularly sensitive to beta blockers and as you know AV node delay is responsible for the PR interval and if AV node is blocked there will be an increase in PR interval and also remember a small all is one class B class 2 agents uh, which is very short acting okay so any any beta blockers are class 2 agents and a small all is very short acting among them and you can use them for SVT supraventricular tachycardia and you can use for rate control in atrial fibrillation and also atrial flutter toxicity uh, toxicity are shared by any kind of beta blockers are impotence exacerbation of COPD and asthma as you can remember uh, in case of COPD and asthma you have already some obstruction in respiratory tract and there are something called a beta 2 block beta 2 receptors in your bronchial tissue and if, if if you give a patient beta blockers they not only blocks the beta 1 receptors in heart sometimes they also block the beta 2 receptors in your bronchial tissue and that's why it can cause actually bronchospasm so it will actually exacerbate the COPD and asthma and as beta blockers does uh, inhibit the uh, pacemaker potentials so it will cause bradycardia in severe doses in high doses it can cause heavy block and if you cause a severe bradycardia it can lead to heart failure and also beta blockers can cause sedation and sleep alteration and as you might remember that hypoglycemia features of hypoglycemia are actually features of excessive sympathetic overactivation and some of the features are actually expressed by stimulation of the beta receptors if the beta receptors are blocked by beta blockers you will not have the you will not see the effects of hypoglycemia in a patient uh, because of the blockade so it may mask, mask the signs of hypoglycemia and also remember that metoprolol can cause dyslipidemia and propranolol can actually exacerbate vasospasm in prince metal enzyme and if someone has a pheochromocytoma or if someone is uh, having a cocaine toxicity if you give beta blocker to this patient there will be unopposed alpha 1 agonism okay and if someone overdose himself or herself with beta blockers give them saline atropine and most importantly glucagon as you can remember in the previous slide i have said that beta blockers actually does exert its effect part of its effect by actually decreasing the cyclic amp and glucagon is a drug which actually will increase the cyclic AMP level and actually increase the uh, effect or counter the effect that produced by beta blockers here we have the class 3 agent which actually which also inhibits the uh, muscle action potential unlike the beta blockers so we have our normal action potential here this is the normal line so this is the normal action potential uh, sorry this is the normal action potential and here we have the action potential after giving potassium channel blockers as you can remember from your previous slides that potassium channels are responsible for the fast rapid repolarization and then the slope and mainly the phase 3 so you have class 3 agents which block the phase 3 and that's why it will markedly prolong the repolarization phase which is actually dominated by efflux of potassium ions so the action potential duration will be increased and also there will be an increase in effective refractory period and the drugs which are included in class 3 are AIDS so the mnemonic says AIDS A for amiodarone very important drug I for ibotilide D for dofelitilide and S for sotalol 
okay and the mechanism i have already mentioned that it increases the action potential duration and then it also causes an increase in effective refractory period in free skew interval so you can see that there is kind of something a resemblance between class 1 agents especially class 1 a agents and class 3 agents the ultimate effect of those uh, blockades are the same but the type of uh, type of uh, uh, cell membrane transporters are different by class 3 agents you block the potassium channel and by class 1a agents you block the sodium channel but the ultimate effects are same you have an increased action potential duration increased effective refractory period and increased qt interval okay just uh, i, I want to integrate the concepts and you can use them for actual fibrillation and actual flutter and ventricular tachycardia all of them and especially in case of ventricular tachycardia you want to use amiodarone and and sort of all. and the class one class three agents have their own specific side effects such as sotalol which causes torsion dependence and it's easy to remember because it increases the qt interval like the class 1a agents and also ibutylide can cause torsion dependence same concept and amiodarone is one very important drug of of class 1 3 group and it mainly causes a potassium blockade but it has actually the actions of all four classes of antiarrhythmics and it has significant toxicities one of them is pulmonary fibrosis and you can also remember from your chemotherapeutic drugs that uh, bleomycin is also another drug which can cause pulmonary fibrosis amiodarone can also cause hepatotoxicity and as you can remember from your chemotherapy drug drugs that methotrexate can also cause hepatotoxicity and amiodarone actually has Audin, especially 40% uh, of amiodarone soil is actually iodine. Uh, that's why it can cause hyperthyroidism. And as you know, that iodine may be toxic to thyroid gland, and that's why it can also cause hypothyroidism. And amiodarone can actually act as a hepton. If it acts as a hepton, there will be um, activation of the immune system, and it actually leads to corneal deposit, skin deposit, and skin deposit actually causes photodermatitis. And amiodarone can also cause neurologic effects, constipation because uh, it actually uh, hampers the gut motility. And as it blocks, as it blocks the potassium channels and all other channels, there will be slowing down of cardiovascular system, and that's why there can be bradycardia, heart block, and heart failure. And so, if you give a patient amiodarone, be advised to give the patient a pulmonary function test, a liver function test, and thyroid function test. Very important to know. So, all of those are very high yield. Very, very high yield. And here, again, I'm sorry to show you that, but it's, it's good to see that potential curve for multiple times. Because here, we have our class 4 agents, which will actually block the phase 0 of pacemaker action potential. So, phase 0 is marked by an influx of calcium ions inside the pacemaker cells. And the class 4 drugs will actually block this. And that's why the slope here will be like that. The slope will be decreased. So, we can see, as you can see here, the slope is actually started decrease here, but here you can see the decrease in slope. So, it was like that and it converted like that. So, yeah, the slope is decreased. The slope of phase 4 of uh, pacemaker action potential is actually decreased. And also, there is prolonged repairization of the AV node. And the drugs, the most important drugs are parapamil and diltiazem so those are called also called cardio selective uh, calcium channel blocker can you tell me which are vasoselective very good nifedipine and the mechanism is it actually it decreases the conduction velocity and also it increases the effective refractory period and increased peer interval because why if you cause a decrease in slope of inward current of calcium you are actually cause a decrease in conduction velocity and also a increase in effective refractory period because you are increasing the duration of the action potential in the cardiac um, pacemaker tissues, tissues and also as you block the as you increase the AV node as you increase the AV node repolarization it will actually cause an uh, increase in pure interval and the user prevention of nodal arrhythmias like supraventricular tachycardias and also rate control in atrial fibrillation and the common side effects are constipation because calcium channel blockers uh, can, can cause a 
motility problem in the gut also called flushing edema especially edema in the ankle very important to know ankle edema and also as it causes an increase in pure interval increased refractory period so like all other antiarrhythmics it will have a cardiovascular depressing effects like heart failure AV block sinus node depression okay so here we have some other agents like adenosine and adenosine actually have different mechanism which moves the potassium out of cell and there is hyperpolarization of cell and it's actually dark of choice in diagnosing or abolishing supraventricular tachycardia but one very uh, one very limiting limiting part of adenosine is very short acting uh, like 15 seconds or some and effects are actually blunted by theophylline and caffeine uh, because both are adenosine receptor antagonist and adenosine can cause some side effects like flushing so remember that calcium channel blockers also can cause flushing and adenosine causes hypotension as you can remember from your physiology that adenosine is actually responsible for vasodilation in, in the cardiac uh, cardiac vessel or coronary vessels to maintain the coronary blood flow so actually it's a physiologic agent which is present on your body which is actually responsible for local regulation of the blood flow not only in cardiac muscle but also in your skeletal muscles so it actually vasodilates and can cause hypertension and also adenosine can cause chest pain sense of impending doom and bronchospasm and we have one last agent in our list which is magnesium and as you can remember class 1a agents and class 3 agents all of them can cause torsus pontus and if that happens you will use magnesium for that and also you can use magnesium for digoxin toxicity so that's all for, for from me today and uh, remember you have to study antiarrhythmic drugs for multiple times because if you don't you will forget because there are a lot of informations here so please study it for multiple times review it uh, after space intervals thanks for watching my video and more are on the way